This is the last episode with Chris. I really have enjoyed talking to him. It was truly a pleasure. Um, in this episode, we talk about the future of FPV. Um, where are th Where's the innovation coming from? What does it look like? Um, and what might play out? We also have a side conversation about phones. I hope that you guys enjoy it. Bye. Let's move into the last portion of the interview, which is looking forward. Um, where do you see the next innovations coming from? Yeah, uh, that's a slippery slope for me because uh, <laughs> because I know that that is quite a dividing industry right now mm -hmm. regarding, uh, for example, DJI entering the yep. market. Yep. I think they're going to be a big influence to that. Mm -hmm. But I think that um, I think similar to what we've seen in uh, computer industry a long time ago. And that, I mm -hmm. think that's something that you've touched in some of your videos. I, I watched them all, by the way. Oh, I, if I don't watch, I actually listen. I put yeah, them in yeah, the back yeah. while uh -huh. I do some work. Yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah, I think that, you know, when something new comes up, uh, other people are looking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so I think that HD is definitely something that we're going to see more and more. You know, mm -hmm. that, uh, not to say anything bad about DJI, I don't really want to get any quarrels with um, sure. other other manufacturers in the industry, but uh, I think it would be good for the industry if uh, other people look at what they do and they sort of uh, come up with their own ways, which I guess uh, Fat Shark is doing that already. Mm -hmm. And there's probably another group or two of people working on similar projects as well. Mm -hmm. I think it would be good for the industry. It would be good for um, uh, would be good for for end users. And I yeah. know that's debatable, right? Some people will say that uh, DJI is doing a horrible disservice to uh, to the industry by entering the industry being so huge and whatnot. Yeah. I, you know, I'm not really going to form an opinion here about this. Um, yeah. But all I'm going to say is that uh, whether it's good or bad, one result is that I think we're going to see uh, innovation in terms of video feed, mm -hmm. uh, better image quality uh, from yeah. a number of companies in the coming years. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of, uh, and likewise in terms of all electronics, I think mm -hmm. we're going to see improvements. Um, I don't see this hobby going away anytime soon. I know some people right. are saying, oh, this, the FPV is dying, whatnot. Mm -hmm. It's not. I think it's, uh, it's, it's going to do like a lot of other industries where it's going to uh, stabilize and eventually see growth mm -hmm. uh, as we go along. But there are obviously going to be uh, a number of companies, hopefully not Armatan, uh, who won't make the right decisions going along and will have a tough go at it. And so it's a matter of uh, trying to be ahead of the, ahead of the, you know, keeping your eyes on the ball, mm -hmm. uh, be pragmatic to a certain extent, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and trying to make the right decisions to mm -hmm. be able to keep up in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, manufacturing. I think that there's also going to be more and more difficulties now in terms of legislations mm -hmm. uh, about flying. That's definitely going to affect. Um, it's definitely going to affect the demographics, at least, yeah. uh, people entering this hobby. But uh, to what extent? I, I I'm not sure. You know, I'm not really. My qualifications are not as a market analyst. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I look back at uh, different things that are I, I, you know, that I did in my life, such as skateboarding, mm -hmm. right, snowboarding. Uh, there was a lot of opposition to these sports when they began, and then there was a lot of legislations in place, and it actually turned into an appeal for people. Right. And hence, hence what I mean by perhaps uh, a change in demographics, mm -hmm. change in the type of people that this hobby will attract. Yeah. Right? Because essentially some people, hey, it's illegal, I want to do it. That's <laughs> what it comes down to, yeah. yeah I mean, it, if it's not is illegal, not a crime. Some, yeah, exactly. So, and, and and at the same time, I think some people will just be discouraged. I can see, for mm -hmm. example, someone getting a three thousand dollar fine, having a rough half a year, 
paying yeah. for that, making ends meet, saying like, look, I'm just selling. I'm I offer yeah. selling my gear. I'm done. Yeah. So it's hard to tell really where that's going to go. But yeah, it's definitely not going to just. It's not going to disappear. That's yeah. for sure. And uh, you know, as far as Armitan's concerned, uh, you know, a lot of people will say, "Oh, you did great work, and you had good marketing tactics, and you offered the lifetime warranty, and you know, you, you deserve to essentially you 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 deserve um, what's the word I'm looking for? Recognitions for all your effort, and the reason mm-hmm. why you do so well is because of your hard work. And well, I'd like to believe that some of that is true, but I mm-hmm. think that it's a lot of it is also due to being at the right place at, at the, the right, right time, time. Yep. meaning early in the game yeah right i mean it's it's incredibly difficult uh, as of today for some new kid on the block to come up with a frame company and do well yeah what it comes down to yeah there's a number of frame makers in the industry today and the ones that particularly do well are the ones that were there pretty much from the beginning yeah right and uh, so they kind of they they grew a reputation, yeah. and their name was put out there, and people got made familiar with them. And by now they're you know just like like Impulse RC for example, mm-hmm. a very very well known brand. Mm-hmm. And so that's just part of them being early in the game, and of yeah. course their hard work, dedication to to mm-hmm. the hobby, and what what it is they do. Yeah, there's a there is a real advantage often to the first mover, uh, the the first mover in the industry, um, yeah. and I also see I also see some of the same things playing out in FPV. It's to a smaller scale, but there's a lot of similarities between what's happened in FPV versus what's happened in the cell phone industry. Um, if you take the modern smartphone, um, you know, if you go back to two thousand. Let's see. The first iPhone was 2007. Then the the Google phone launched, and then the other companies. So to say 2009, 2010, um, there were ten companies, let's say, that were fighting all fighting for market share. Um, now you've got a much mature industry, and outside of China, because China is pretty much specifically its own little world. Um, but if you take the rest of the world, um, there's two main players now. There's Samsung and there's Apple. Um, Google Google does a little bit, but they don't necessarily count as a major Sony player. Sony Ericsson also a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sony Ericsson. Um, but, I mean, by far in terms of market share. Um, Samsung Apple and, and Samsung owns 90% of it together. Um so, yeah, and and Samsung, if I'm not mistaken, they've done some really good damage to iPhone in the last couple of years, three years now. They have. They did um, extremely good work. You know, they yeah. come they come a long way. Well, you know, it was, there was it, it's interesting, and I mean, we're I guess we're getting far afield, um, but uh, you know, it used to be that Apple innovated, and Samsung followed, and now you're starting to see that kind of flip on its head where samsung is innovating samsung is doing new things and apple is just kind of plodding along um occasionally adopting something that samsung has done um Mm -hmm. and you know moving on with their super high quality i mean uh, you know uh, i I was an ios engineer for a long time I, i still carry iphones i still like what they what they do um but all that to say um, is that market consolidation will happen, um, and it probably yeah. is is happening within the FPV industry as we speak. Um, it started already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, another question I have for you is, you know, do you think that quad design has basically played out? Has it been has it plateaued, or are there still innovations to make in quad design? Uh, that's a good question, and uh, the main thing that comes to mind when you ask that question, Michael, is touches base, uh, touch touches on uh, something we discussed earlier, mm-hmm. where there's that that price point that people just refuse right. to pay more. Yeah, and, and that is problematic. That's problematic mm-hmm. because I can tell you that if we were able to uh, 
uh, essentially think of a product that we would be able to sell, let's say, $200 for a frame. Just a frame, nothing else. Not just a frame, $200, mm-hmm. right? Uh, we would have the ability to get a lot more intricate and a lot more so- sophisticated in terms of design. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think that uh, in that sense, this is definitely, uh, that touches on another question you mentioned, like is, is the cloning industry hurting mm-hmm. Hurting development or hurting this this in this well, it, in that sense it is because it's putting mm-hmm. it, it's really putting a strain on our ability to put products out there which cost more mm-hmm. but would be superior mm-hmm. and uh, because it just wouldn't sell. Just mm-hmm. I mean it just really, it would be really hard sell to sell a frame for two hundred dollars. Yeah. When at the end of the day, Michael, uh, it might be better in in a hundred different ways Mm -hmm. but is it really going to fly better right i mean you got four motors a flight controllers and camera (laughs) and dtx right right? so so we're we're really limited in that i think uh is the design cycle coming to an end or coming to a a plateau or sort of a, a slowing down i honestly i i am not sure Mm-hmm. I, I am not sure. I think that uh, there's still room, definitely, for improvements that mm-hmm. we can do within an acceptable price point. And mm-hmm. there's still room for also exploring uh, different types of materials that we can use mm-hmm. and uh, different applications, essentially. Uh, what I mean, as a frame maker, what I really like to, to move towards is, is experimenting with molding designs, molded designs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've seen a company like uh, FURC mm-hmm. uh, delve in that. Uh, recently, we've seen uh, Diatone coming up with a model called the Exorcist, mm-hmm. which is a molded frame. Mm-hmm. And I think that uh, it really it really adds uh, potential for for nice development in terms of frame. Mm-hmm. But again, uh, the bloody dollar. The price point of these things is, is really an in, a big hindrance, right? To being able to achieve that, yeah. So baby baby steps, I guess, in that direction, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Um, so in that vein, and and this would be probably my final question to you um, is, you know, do you see another material on the horizon that is not carbon fiber that would be as durable and but is more easily more easily workable or is more durable but still a, at a competitive price point is anything like that that you know of of coming around the corner you're mixing a few things there with competitive while better well yeah uh, i mean it yeah uh, you know you get what you pay for yeah yeah i think that uh, if you're going to have a material that's going to be if it's better, it's not going to be as cheap. Right. Okay. And if it is as cheap, well, then you'd wonder why we never thought about it. Right. Right. So for example, titanium has definitely some potential to, to, to create a bunch of different applications, but the price is so high. Right. Price is so high. Yeah. So well, titanium is definitely something I've found that uh, has really good potential for a bunch of different applications, mm-hmm. not just camera protection. But oftentimes we think about it, and when we, by the time we do a cost calculation, it's like, well, we can't. We we'll just go back to carbon fiber. It's just yeah. I don't think we can market it, mm-hmm. right? Uh, material composites, you never know what's going to come up, I mean, uh, over time. But it really does seem that at this point in time, uh, carbon fiber is really at the top of that game. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I guess the, I mean, how can people find you? Where would you like to direct them? Um, and uh, any final words? Well, the best place to find us, I guess, to, uh, would be Facebook or our website. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll link those below. Yeah. And then, of course, if uh, people have any questions, they, they can email us at support at armatanquads.com. Mm-hmm. And uh, anybody wants to talk to me directly, 
uh, about something they feel shouldn't be addressed to our support staff, it would be service at honoredanquas.com. Okay. Final note, Michael, I just want to say thank you. It was a pleasure talking with you. Thank you. Uh, I've been listening to all your shows. It's kind of, uh, yeah, it's, it's nice to have my two cents yeah. about some of these questions you have. I think you, you asked some good questions. And, well, thank yeah, you. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. You have been on with Chris, Chris LaRue from Armaton Quads. Um, definitely go give him a, a, a check. And uh, thank you for coming on to the Michael Rollins Show, Chris. Thank you. We will uh, talk to you all soon. Bye. And that is it for Mr. LaRue. Um, I just want to thank him for coming on. It, it definitely scheduling time for international interviews, especially when you're 12 hours apart, can be hard. Um, and you know, he worked with me and it turned into such a great conversation. Um, I really appreciate his insight and just his take on, you know, where the FPV industry has come from and where it might be going. Um, so once again, thank you, Chris, for coming on. Um, so great, glad to have you. Um, want to give one more shout out as I always do to my patrons. Thank you. You guys are awesome. Um, if you're interested in a podcast form of this and all the series, then you can look in the link, a link for the description below. Um, there's a $3 tier that gets you the podcast form. Um, and you know, there might be some other perks that start showing up soon. Anyways, thank you for listening to listening to Chris LaRue from Armitane and uh, I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye.